You're going to ask me the first question again, right? Yeah, but I'm going to do the whole introduction where you get to introduce yourself. Ready? Yes, man. What's up, guys? It's me, Chad, and today I have a very special guest with me. You want to tell him your name? Oh, oh. Yeah, there we go. You can tell him? Yes, yes. And we just take off our masks, you know. Take off our, oh, yeah. We took off the masks just for the social. Keep a, a, a distance. A distance. You want to tell him your name? Yeah, keep your Who distance. you are? You can tell him your name? Who you are? Go ahead again. Your name. You know, I have a very special name, right? A very special name. Let's hear it. My name is Pernell Charles. My middle name is Pat Rowe. Okay. My pernel is P E A R, which is pern. pern. And uh, patro means boss. Boss. In the Brazilian language. Oh, I didn't know that, guys. My grandmother was working in a cane field in Cuba, and her boss was from Brazil. But in Portuguese, it's P A T R O E S. Oh. And she say, I look like a boss, so she called me P A T R O E. Patrick. However, However, when I was registered, uh -huh. the lady who registered me spelled my name P A T R O W. Patrol. And I suffered greatly. As a child, they call me all kind of nickname with this row, cane, row, head, row, all kind of row. And when I was about to get my passport, I changed my name to P A T R O E. So now. Perfect. Colonel Patro Charles. Charles. First of my mother's seven children. Ooh. Never destroy the passage. Mm -hmm. So everybody was able to come out. Was everybody was able to come out as the first. That's perfect. Well, guys, you said and you were able to be here. And I was able to be here. That's a good. That's a good thing. And that was the name. Guys, I have my middle name is Pernell. For those who don't know, because of this one, so I'm Chad Pernell. You guys sent in some questions. They sent in a lot of questions for you to answer. So we're gonna try and get through them, see which ones you can answer, and that's it. You ready? Go ahead. All right, guys, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let's see, the first question is, why did you decide to enter politics? I have always searched for a profession that allow me to make a contribution to the development of my country and my people. Help them to be better, and they help me to be better than I was. And I, I, I chose to enter policy. I first became a councillor, mm -hmm. then a senator, then a member of parliament, then a minister, and then finally ended up as Speaker of the House. Mm -hmm. Good answer. All right. The next one is, is there anything you regret doing or not doing while in office? Um, I wouldn't say regret. I tried to do everything that I would like to do. I didn't go through all of them. I tried to do everything that was assigned to me. I didn't get through all of them. But like everything else, you win some, you lose some, and you don't cry over what you lose once you can continue to make it better or to correct it. Good answer. How did life in politics or service to your country affect your family? Well, both ways. I think my family, I would say, I don't like to use the word suffer. Uh, however, they suffer my not being with them. Mm -hmm. They enjoy my coming home and they enjoy my accomplishment and what I've been able to help them to accomplish. And that is why I taught them leave their profession that I gave them, law and medicine, and follow my footsteps. Okay. All right. The next one is, what do you think is your biggest accomplishment? I don't have any one accomplishment. Unless I would say, as I started, 
has made a contribution to making people's lives better. Mm. More people get jobs, more people have houses, more people get better remuneration for what they're doing. And I feel very good that I can look back and say, I helped you. Or you come up and say, do you know me? I said, no. Do you know I'm a nurse? How? You sent me to school. In other words, I'm so happy that I was able to help. help. I'm an little one. I was walking in, in Chapleton and a tall man came with a little guy. And a man came beside me, looked at the bed and said, shake his hand, boy. I said, take it easy, why are you roughing him? I said, shake his hand, boy. I said, so I shook his hand. Is he making a living in a house? So what I said, you give me a job, and I build a house. I said, good. Oh, that's nice. The next one is, are you a Christian? A Christian? Yes. I'm a Christian because I believe in the evolution of Christ that is given to us as a guide for my life. Um, there are certain things like, was Jesus really born on the 25th? It doesn't matter. We celebrate the 25th as a day of his birth, so it doesn't bother me. But I believe in God, I pray, I sing my prayers, and I'm constantly guided by that feeling. In other words, there is something that makes you, didn't make an accident today? Didn't yeah. have a heart attack? That's true. They, they didn't have a stroke and um, still able to give an interview to your grandson? Yes, <laughs> and give an interview to you guys. Yes, yes, yes. What were your aspirations as a child growing up? What was my one? What was your aspirations? What did you want to be? I, the, the doctor that came to my school, very often was a dentist. Mm -hmm. I think the average doctor came there like once a month, the dentist would come like once every two weeks. And I said, I would like to pull out teeth like this dentist. And I grew up wanting to be a dentist. And I, I started my first year at university, New York University, in the, in the medical program. But I overcome by my willingness and wanting to proceed on the road of helping more people the best I can. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a dentist, but as you know, my daughter followed that toast trip and became a dental surgeon. Mm -hmm. Good answer. The next one is, how did the pandemic affect you personally? Oh, what? How did the pandemic affect you personally? Well, it affected me because of my children. They, they locked my door. They took away my keys. <laughs> my daughter, Michelle, set people on me in the road, anywhere I beat anybody, they said, what's your name? Charles, I have a paper for you. Well, I've been instructed by your daughter to arrest you and call her. Well, you know, I understand what they mean, but it affects me because a lot of people are suffering worldwide. Yeah. I think it's the first I've ever seen this, and my consideration is when it is going to stop, how far it's going to go, how many of us will be alive. Yep. You know, so... That's in fact is my, 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 my serious consideration of mm -hmm. right now, the future. Millions have died already, and it's likely that right. millions will die, including us. That's right. The next one is what do you like to do for fun? Um, well, I play tennis. Tennis. I play tennis. Tennis. <laughs> I, as I did with you this morning. Yes, guy. I. I love to have discussion, discourse. I love to have a good, intelligent discussion, particularly with younger people, hear their ideas. Um, I don't drink alcohol, I don't go to bars, I don't go to dances. I, uh, uh, those are not the things that inspire me. I like gathering, I like to discuss things with my colleagues, my friends. And what can we do to make the world better? Mm, that's a good answer. The next one is, when did you first start playing and liking tennis? My colleague Ed Bartlett gave me a racket and a tin of ball. 1980 when we, were, when we became ministers. I never saw a ball, I never held a ball before, I never, I never played tennis before. 
and I went to the court at, at, at Pegasus the next morning and the, and the guy threw a ball at me and I hit it back and he said, stay with us, you, you look as if you win. He got it. And that's for 40 years, every wow. day except Saturdays and some Sundays. Mm. 40 years. 40 years. Jeez. All right, the next one is, did you ever have thoughts of becoming the prime minister? Um, if I say no, some of my colleagues are going to say, them, what the hell were you doing making all that trouble? Um, no, I never go after the prime minister to displace him. Mm. I've always pushed to be the best that I can within the environment and to help the people. So the prime minister comes along. I think I do a good job too, but being a minister, in my opinion, was just as good. Because the prime ministers that I work with, Golden, um, Andrew, El Shashira, Edward Siago, uh, you know, um, they never stop me from doing what I have to do in the ministry that they give to me. So I worked as a prime minister within my ministry. And I did what I can. That is why I can boast that there are hundreds of people living in houses who I have assisted to live in a house. Thousands have a job today who I have assisted to get that job. Thousands have improved wages that I have negotiated for them. And um, down the line, you know, I, I have saved, I would say, well, I don't know if I want to say, save, but I have helped people to save themselves from poverty by showing them how I got out of poverty because mm. I was born in an area where people were poor. And That's uh, actually the next question. Where? Tell them where you were born. Well, I was born in the Dry Harbor Mountains. That is in St. Anne, in a little place called Macedonia. There were no springs, no, springs. no rivers. No rivers. No paved roads, no electricity, no fridge. No fridge. The ice truck comes around like once a month in the summer month. Ice truck? Ice truck. And when you get a piece of ice, you can't afford to put it in water. You have to shave it to make ice. Cream. To make a, like a snow so, cone. So the, we didn't have a refrigerator, we didn't have any radio, we didn't have any television, we didn't have any paved roads, we didn't have any running water, no electricity, we didn't have all of that. In fact, uh, I, my greatest setback is that there was no basic school mm -hmm. in my district. And my mother had the responsibility of teaching me ABC, mm -hmm. teaching me to spell cat, rat, bat, and teaching me to count to 100. And that qualified me to go to elementary school at age seven. So I have a little grandson who is age seven, who is brighter than when I was 12. And you guys who got started at three, uh -huh. I got started at seven. seven. And so I lost, and according to Edward C. the first, the first seven years is the best years for any child to, to learn, to, learn. to make the move. The next one is, how old are you? Um, my mother told me I was born on a Monday morning uh -huh. on the 31st of August. Okay. 1936. Now, the amazing thing about that, I have to go and now recheck whether it was really a Monday morning. Uh -huh. Because my last birthday was Monday. The 31st of August, 2020. Now, according to those who plan the, or Michelle will tell me this astrology, astrology, whatever it is, the 31st of August will, mm -hmm. on a Monday, will never return on our almanac for 130 years. 
Wait, what? The 31st? The 31st of August, being a Monday, will never return for a hundred and something years. Why? Well, check the calendar. The 31st of August? Yes. And a Monday. 2026. Huh? 2026. 2026? Yeah. You have you have the 31st of August and a Monday? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we gotta check that. We gotta check that. There's something that that it's it's published, so there's mm -hmm. something that the next one is how was your journey to school like? What was describe your journey to school? When I started school? No, as in your journey to school. What um, did you have to do to go to school? How did you get to school? Interesting. My school was two miles away from my home. Mm. We walked to school barefoot. barefoot. And school let out at 12. We ran home two miles to have breakfast, dinner, lunch, mm -hmm. and run back to school. And Why back to school? Back in the evening. Why back to school? We had to go have lunch. There was nothing, no, there was no lunch at school. We didn't carry lunch at oh, okay. the later days. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. So, I, until I was 17, 18, there was no transport in my area that takes you to school. You had to walk. And sometimes you have two toenails that have been removed by stones. And if you're interested in school, you walk on your heel. Mm -hmm. You never stay home. You walk on your heel to get it. So what about, what if what would you do if it was raining? Rain? Oh, well. You know banana? Banana? Banana. Yeah. You cut a banana leaf uh -huh. and you hold it hold over your over. head. Towards and you walk on it. On your yeah, we didn't have any umbrellas. umbrellas. Okay. What are some of your, what is one of your best childhood memories? Uh, there have been many. Uh, in many very many areas. Being a scout, being a child that carried my biggest mango and biggest beer for my teacher. My teacher loved me. And uh, I wasn't very bright because I was way behind many students. I was in, I was in the first fifty percent of my class. But um, there are many things, many things. I, I tried. I I tried running. I come last one time. But I I tried running. I I play cricket and it wasn't constructive mm -hmm. playing. But when I hit and catch a ball, it's gone. It's lost. So I always get a. Not a play. Yeah. But um, I think that the most, the greatest pride was that your parents teach you to have what they call manners Man. and respect for others, their teacher, their colleagues, their friends, and even your enemy. Mm -hmm. There are certain distance that you want to stay, but within the order within of the respect. Order of respect. How many years have you been in politics? I returned to Jamaica from university in 1965. I joined Bustamante Industrial Trade Union in September of 65. I joined the Jamaica Labour Party in January 1966, mm -hmm. and I'm still a member. Mm -hmm. And within that period I accomplished, as I have said, been a member of the executive, I've been a member, I think probably I'm the oldest member of living executive right mm -hmm. now. Um, I went through, as I told you, council, senate, parliament, ministry, and all of that. Okay. That's um, from 1965, 1966 mm -hmm. to now. 1966. So if you call that six and six, 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 six and forty, and then you take away two from twenty, 
1966. 1966. So 60 and 40 is 200. 55 years. That's correct. 55 years. Years have been in. 55 politics, years, guys. Serving the Jamaican people. Mm -hmm. And there have been serious good times and bad times. Struggles and other struggles. In prison, in detention, in happiness, in health. Struggle. Jeez. The next one is, why did you choose JLP? Why did you choose the Jamaica Labour Party over piano? That's interesting. When I came back from America, Michael Manley was in his Aki, as they would say, and mm -hmm. Seattle. Michael Manley say a right way that I would love to say it. Mm -hmm. Siago was doing it the right way that I would like to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, although I was excited with Michael because he speaks the language that excites me yeah. and that I would like to do. And what Siago was doing the work, helping the people, putting them in houses, helping the children. I joined with Ed of Seattle. Mm -hmm. And he's dead. They had rough times and good times. But my being here today, all that I have accomplished started with Edward Seattle, mm -hmm. who invited me to be the, join the Labour Party, made me a councillor, recommended me to be a senator. He also made me a senator recommended me to, to, to a seat and he helped me to win that seat and he made me a minister on four occasions. Mm -hmm. And I think that Edward Seattle, whatever anybody wants to say, is the person who assisted me most in this journey. Mm -hmm. Okay. And as I said, like a father, uh -huh. he whipped me sometimes. I believe you. All right, the next one is, how did you meet grandma? How did I? How did you meet my grandma? You mean my wife? Yes. Your wife, my grandma? I don't think I should tell you. Oh. It is unfair. Okay, I tell you. Mm. I don't know how I could have been going to a party by myself. Uh -huh. Young boy, you know, I went to a party by myself. Uh -huh. And I saw, when I went in, I saw this beautiful girl mm -hmm. sitting with a long, with a big glass of what I walked over to her and said, Good afternoon, now. I said, Good afternoon. I said, You know, you shouldn't be drinking rum and coke. Said, I'm not drinking rum and coke, I'm having a coke. And that was it. <laughs> I got a chance to talk to her and uh, she was invited by the guy who invited me to the party. Oh. But the guy came over, saw her speaking and said to me if I could drop her back home. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't think so. And he said, please, I said, I, I will oblige. And that was crossroad. Mm -hmm. And by the time we reached halfway tree, when we were going home, I said to her, you look like a very nice lady. She said, why you say that? I said, you look cool, calm, and beautiful. Cool, and you're a nurse. Calm, beautiful. I said, yes. I said, you know, I love nurses. Oh, you love your nurse. <laughs> so as she said to me, uh, so I said, but do you have a boyfriend? She said, yes, I do. I have a very serious man, he, he is studying to be a, 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 a pastor, he's in the ministry at Ely. I said, so you guys don't get together and say, oh, no, 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 we're not in that. So, I was, so when I turned on to drop her, I gave her, I said, you know something? I have a feeling, she said, what's your feeling? I feel I'm on party, she said, excuse me. <laughs> The first day you met her, the first night. It was not even two hours. Not even two hours. I think I'm going to marry you. She said, excuse me, she tells. And she came out of the car. 
And I said, is it possible I could see you tomorrow evening? She said, I thought you said you were a Seventh-day Adventist. You could have invited me to church. I said, I'd be here at 8.30. Church started at 9. I was here from 8 and the next morning. I took her to church. I keep looking at this woman. I said, well, this, this woman is... And then the next Sunday, I drove her all the way to Macedonia, and I took her to my mother and father. When I walk in... Wait, the, the week after? No. Oh, I thought you said one week after. How long no. How long was that between no, the first no, that church Saturday. date? That was Friday night, uh-huh. Saturday, and Sunday. Saturday we went to church. And Sunday she met your parents? And then we head to country Sunday. So hold on, hold on. Friday. Hold on. So the first night you met her is when you told her, I'm going to marry you. you. The second night you met her, I you brought to church. The church. And the third day you knew her, she met your parents? All the way to Macedonia, like she got. And here's the joke. Guys, don't try this at home. <laughs> when I went, when I, I opened my door, uh-huh. and going, my father was in the living room, he looked at me and he said, Is it? Mm, is it? <laughs> that means that looks all right. It's a good job. Now, my mother, I asked, Mama, you're a hypocrite. I went around to introduce her to my mother. My mother hugged her and said, Oh, you are such. I said, Mama, you just meet her. She's much nice. So, but I expected that from my mother. And, mm-hmm. and I was going to England. That, that thing was January. So, I was going over the next week. So, Errol Anderson was my good friend. He's now dead. And uh, I said to Errol, Will you keep your head at two months for me? I think I like her. Errol was married, so he would be happy to do it. He'd be happy to just keep an eye on her for you. So when I was in England, I keep calling him and say, boy, she all right, you know, check her out, she all right. And I came back home. I thought it was January, February, March. Mm-hmm. Um, there was a pastor, Russell, mm-hmm. at Huey. Mm-hmm. And she was working at Huey. And her man was in the university. You as yes, well. And so I saw that I said, Horace, this and girl look. What about you, please, dear man? He said, It couldn't be Gloria Hansen. I said, Yes. He said, You are the six man who asked me about her, so if you're interested, move fast. <laughs> I said that January for a month. I said, April. April. And he said, Boy. You may move fast. He said, I have a date. August the 20th. That's a month. Five weeks from there. Five weeks in advance? I said, book it. We got married, was it the 20th? June. The 19th of August. June. Like June. June, yeah. And that's 1970. Mm-hmm. 1970? Uh-huh. 1970. Um, and she has been my best friend, uh-huh. my wife. Now we celebrated our 50th year. Uh-huh. We have not had the first quarrel. We have never had a fight. She robbed me. Because my mother told her something like that is not for play. My mother told her during our discussion mm-hmm. after we met, she said, He was a nice guy, you know. My father is a nice guy. But well, then cheap. Cheap. You have, you have to thief them. And Do you think them, you're cheap? Huh? Do you think you're cheap? Well, my mother says <laughs> that. They're cheap and I'll give you no money. You have to thief them. And from that, my wife become a thief. <laughs> and she will not take more, take enough for you to miss. Is it just enough? No, the difference, the joke that we have, you know. If she asks me for her money, I give her more than if she take her money. So I, I just make sure she take her money. <laughs> I say, it's more easier that way. Yeah, but I, your grandmother, I tell you, she doesn't do interviews. Mm-hmm. 
but she is a, she's a nice person. She's forgiving. And that's why I'm able to live with her. I don't want to go into that when I say she's forgiving. Now that she catches the air break. All right, go to it. All right. <laughs> The, oh, well, the next question was, when did you marry? So that's June 20th, yeah, 1970. June 20th, 1970, right? Was it 20th, 19th, one of those two? All right. The next question is, somebody's asking, oh, kind of just answered that one as well. What is it? It was the, it was the, how did you fall in love with your wife? On the first day, guys. That's, that's no, the answer. That's, that's, that's. Somebody asked, are you a Seventh-day Adventist? Yes. Why? Born comes to mother and father at Ventus, I'm still in the church. <laughs> Although you broke off the edge sometime, I'm a simple Adventist. That's why I don't visit bars, I don't drink alcohol, I don't go to these massive dances, I don't do certain things, right? And, and other things are moderate. Okay. The next one is, who or what was the best leadership of the country that you've seen? Who led the country the best? Jamaica. Jamaica. It's not a, it's not a question that I could answer fairly. Because all our leaders appear at a time when certain things happen. Different, yeah. And sure. it will be fair to say, Patterson wasn't good. Portia wasn't good. Chiaga was good and was good. I think all our leaders had periods when they did certain things, imposed on them or proposed to them. And um, I, I, I think all our leaders have served. The people's choice gives the answer. In the two terms, they say go and rest. Well, the PNP did a long term and they did a long term because the JNP messed up. And part of that messing up was with me, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and, and, and those who know will understand. Mm-hmm. There was a gang of five of which I was one of them. And Mr. Siaga and myself were together but separated. And yet, I was happy that when I was 80 years old, Michelle, your mother, invited Mr. Siaga to my birthday. Mm-hmm. And he spoke. And he spoke of the relationship. And he gave a joke. We went on a political uh, journey, mm-hmm. went on a campaign in St. Mary. Mm-hmm. And I was driving him, and the crows, some trucks were before us. And when we reached a street, the truck stopped. And all the people ran out of the truck coming back. So I said, what the hell is this? And they said, they must stone this and they must fire gun and all that. Thing. So I come out and said, Eddie, we gotta go in front. Mm-hmm. And he said, yes. So when we got out of the car, somebody's gonna drive now. I said to him, you go in front. I am behind you. Whenever I say duck, it means a stone is coming for you. <laughs> he gave the joke. And when the people see that we came on the car mm-hmm. and we were going to lead, yeah. man, everybody got out. And all who was throwing stone disappeared. Mm-hmm. And he gave the joke and said that I told him he must go in front. And I am going to watch his head. When I tell him duck, I mean a stone is coming. coming. And he said in that meeting, you know, things could have been different. If we, not Malone, if we had handled that period differently. That's true. So there you have everything. That's true. That's it? Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> what is your favorite food? Food? Favorite food, all time favorite. You can eat it any time of the day. Macaroni and cheese and fish. Macaroni and cheese? Yes. Macaroni and cheese and fish. 
Macaroni and cheese. What type of fish though? Steam fish? Fried steam fish. fish. Steam fish. Macaroni and cheese and I steam love fish. Macaroni and cheese. <laughs> you know, I'm a boy who eat roast potato, roast yam, roast banana, plantain. This one. But it's macaroni and cheese. And my sister in law, uh-huh. Mary, Kip's wife, called her and said, What's your brother in law's favorite food? Macaroni and cheese. Macaroni and cheese. I told her when she's when I'm coming, make sure you have macaroni, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> so whatever meat or fish you have, macaroni and cheese. I love it. Okay. Uh, guys, mm-hmm. macaroni and cheese. Do you think politics is heading in the right direction? Mm-hmm. Do you think politics is heading in the right direction? Well, put it this way. The direction that we all are heading, mm. politics is also in that direction. Yeah. It can be left, it can be right. Nobody know, I didn't know, that the time would come when America's democracy mm. would be what it is today. Nobody, I, I didn't know that we would have what happened in Washington. America being the leader as far as concerned of our democratic world, our free world, or, you know, the yeah. world of happiness. Mm-hmm. So, it's, it's, it's a tough world. And uh, these things will come. I, and that's a question that you have to look at yourself and see where you're going. Some left, some right, sometime left, right, and sometime right, left, and you go. You have to face it, meet it. Don't run away from it. That's a good answer. And I, we're on the final three questions. I purposely left two of these for last, but this next one is, what's your advice to a young person who would like to enter representational politics? Well, first, you should have an objective why you want to enter politics. Mm-hmm. The propaganda that every politician is rich. Not it's true. not true. The propaganda that every politician is thief. Not, not true. true. Um, uh, some people have. Oh, your hands are blocking your face. Some people have um, become rich mm-hmm. because they got a chance to invest. Mm-hmm. And being in politics, more people give you breaks, mm-hmm. right? But you don't have to steal if you don't want to. You don't have to use the brakes if you don't want to. You can go in and come out like many of us have done. And many of us have come out and able to take care of themselves for the rest of their life. So somebody has to take care of them. So it's, it's, it's a rough world. Politics like any other profession, you know. Mm-hmm. You yeah. have to guide it. You have to have an objective. You have to work with it. You have to be honest about it and do it. That's a good answer. Now, are you ready for the final two questions? The second to last question is your hair. They want to know what what's what's the deal with your hair? How did it start? How did it happen? They want well, to do the whole rundown. Well, your mother. Uh huh. Your mother started to grow at age thirteen. And she came and said, Daddy, look, Let's look, look, sure look, 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 look. Right. I have gray hair like you. I said, don't be happy about it. <laughs> and her mother took care of that, right? Uh-huh. Um, my hair grew that way. Uh-huh. But I helped it to stay that way. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. It started that way, if you check. And it became a part of my identification. So that I'm walking in, I'm walking in the plaza and a little girl Come with her mother and say, Mommy, I saw that man on TV. TV. They say, Oh, you have two color hair. I said, oh. That's right. And it became my identity. What, what age did it start? Oh, I, 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 I started to recognize it mm-hmm. in 1979, 1980, because I remember I was in St. Thomas. Mm-hmm. I had a patch here, started here going back. Was it, was it like salt and pepper? Was it like black and gray? 
Yeah, or was it, or did it just start going straight gray? No, 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 it was black, black and gray. And then gray come up. On. And they started mixing. A lot of people have these batteries, but none of them organize it. Organize it like you. So I was walking in California and I saw a young man, white guy and his mm-hmm. whoever was coming over, man and a woman. And the lady walked away from him, came over to me and said, Is this real? <laughs> <laughs> He grabbed her. I said, hey, you mad? <laughs> and I said, take it easy, don't worry. Yeah. He felt she had assaulted me. Yeah. I said, it's very real. She said, oh, I'd love to have my life back. I said, it's just for men to know. You get that one? Let's see. We're not gonna. I'm not gonna explain it. Let's see who got the reference that he just made. Let's see. Pull it back up. Try and get it. I'll, you know, I'll. I'll even do a giveaway. Cause tell them the names of your books. He writes books, guys. For those who don't okay. know. Okay. I. I want to tell you, as my grandson, uh-huh. that if you sleep eight hours every day, uh-huh. you are in the wrong path. Okay. This medical presentation that you have to have eight hours sleep every day. I am 85. I've never slept eight hours. Mm-hmm. One time. Never? Never. I've never gone to bed and spent eight hours sleeping. Never? That's 24 hours in each day. And you guys spend a... And if you spend eight sleeping, sleeping. I'm going to be... How many? 16. So, you know. Guys, so your eyes books. You, 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 you must read. Read. Remember, I lost my first seven years. Mm. You know? And so I had to make up. And uh, I was, let's say, I was a, a rough guy, right? Uh-huh. I rough and smooth and nice and not nice. So I was putting. Detention. Detention. By, by Michael Manley team. Mm-hmm. And when I came out, I thought I should tell you mm-hmm. what happened to me in detention. So I wrote this detain. Detain. Okay? Okay. And afterwards, I decided that I want to speak to you. Mm-hmm. So I said, I was crying over the rough days I had, you know. Not the good days, but mm-hmm. and so I wrote a cry from the grassroots. Yeah. I say I am the grassroots. Oh, you can tell that your hair was, okay. it was fully just coming okay, in you there. Can see, yeah, right? yeah, you can see it was coming in there. Right. And then, oh, let me see this. if you guys can see. I don't know if you guys will be able to see. You can see that his his hair it was fully China. It was starting to come into what it was today. Now, the this book came out of the State of Emergency, mm-hmm. Commission of Inquiry, and some of the things that happened like, uh, to me and others under the previous government. Okay. So it's politics of power. So they're in power and the politics that intervene. Okay. So this is a book that is all me. Oh, yeah. I, when I lost my first election, I had five years, and so I read, make notes, and write. So these are four books, and I'm pondering mm-hmm. the one that I'm writing now. So you are in the middle of writing? I am in the process of writing a book now, which will say to say a lot about me. Okay. It's uh, where I was born, what did I do? What did I do right? What did I do wrong? And I, how I went to school mm-hmm. in Jamaica, how I went to school in America, mm-hmm. where my uncle was, and I drove a cab mm-hmm. by night mm-hmm. and go to school by day. Mm-hmm. And at some stage, I go to school at night and drive a cab by day. School mm-hmm. myself, send home some money for mama, you know, and uh, after that, 
I was president of the West Indian Student Association in America. And, you know, that's one of the things that influenced me. Jamaicans always come. Jamaicans are not a Caribbean students. They land in America because it's wonderful to come to America, but when you get there, what happened? Nowhere yes. to live, yeah. run out of money, no food. And so there was a good friend of mine who is also a politician in Jamaica, Horace Clark. Horace Clark was um, a blessed memory as sec um, treasurer mm -hmm. to the West Indian Student Association. I was a president. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had receptions, dances, all things to raise funds. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of money. So any student who could not pay their tuition would not be sent home. Wow. We'd either lend them or give them uh, some money to help. And hundreds of students who benefited. And I will tell you, Horace Clark has never written a check to himself. Mm -hmm. I've never written one for me. We worked and we were able to save the money for others. And there are many people probably listening now who said, I'm a beneficiary. Mm -hmm. Right? Yesterday. So what was the finishing of the question? Oh, there's one more question, but before we get into that question, because that one's that one's probably the biggest question. Yeah. I'm going to sponsor a giveaway for this is the first book. That's the, the first Tain. book. Then. Tain is the first book, guys. I'm sponsoring a giveaway for four of these books. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have a giveaway. Four? For four people. Four people get the chance to get this book for free, get to read it, and then the next three is up to them. Yes, yes. I, yes. I will make a contribution. Yes. But I will, for any university student who is mm -hmm. doing social science, mm -hmm. this is, well, I tell you, Mr. Siago, when he was writing his books, and he did that late, mm -hmm. he called me and said he wanted to, my permission, to quote from this book, book, because it was the, it's the only book that recorded what happened at mm -hmm. that I felt very good. I told him you could put the whole book in it. I don't know who it is, but you know. So will you match my giveaway for this? For That's social science students? For any student who is doing social science, mm -hmm. politics and government at any university, this book will help them okay. for the period that Jamaica has. This one, this one will tell you who I am. Who I was, mm -hmm. who I would like to be, uh, and uh, it has some tough things in it. Has some tough things in it. Okay. You ready for the final question? Yes. It's a big question. I know the answer. I think Mom knows the answer. You know the answer deep down, but they don't know the answer. Who is your favorite grandchild? Who is my favorite grandchild? Girl child. Grandchild. Oh, grandchild. Oh. I have I have had consultation with the other grandchildren, and they have told me mm -hmm. it would be all right to tell you. It'd be all right to tell me that <laughs> as long as I got it on camera. As guys, you heard it. You they, heard it. They and they authorize me. They authorize. Hey, I don't matter what authorization. I heard it. I can play it back. Mommy, our live studio audience, Mommy is back there. She heard it. Guys. And they, they, they further said mm -hmm. that you will authorize them uh -huh. to say which of them is my favorite. Oh, I didn't agree to that one. I didn't agree to that one. They have said to me, uh -huh. it's all right for me to tell you you are my favorite. Uh -huh. And they said that I have to ask you who I have to say it's my favorite. Out of them? Yes. Mm. Ah, ah. Because it might replace you. Oh, that's impossible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's impossible. <laughs> that's impossible. Guys. The big thing. All my grandchildren. Mm. On a serious note. Favorite. Notes. Oh. Mm. It is a fact that I prefer the younger ones to the older ones. Yeah, baby. It's a fact that I prefer the girls to the boys. Yeah, but right. all of my grandchildren and great-grandchildren. Yes, guys, I forgot to mention he's not only a grandpa, 
he's not a great grandpa for three. Three. Yeah, three. How does that feel? Three great grandchildren. Well, oh my. No, four. Four. It feels good. Four grandchildren. Four, four great grandchildren. Jeez. I think. Don't chat that um, There was. There is still. A former minister. Mm -hmm. Anthony Johnson. One day. At the executive meeting. Asked permission to. Suspend the order. Mm -hmm. And because he had something to say. Everybody looked at him. And, Chairman said, go ahead. Said, Mr. Chairman, when I was a boy, there were not many families who have adopted a child. Sure. And we have a man among us who have four daughters. Three of them are doctors. Three sons. One is a doctor. So he has four doctors in his immediate family. And an attorney, mm -hmm. a business, and two business persons mm -hmm. above a second degree. Mm -hmm. Now, say that to say, the greatest mission that any parents could have mm -hmm. is to see to it that their children are educated. When you're educated, you're 60% sure of a job. That's true. When you're illiterate, you're 90% sure you won't get a job. Yeah, no, no. And so, it's tough to educate. It's tough for you to educate yourself. But I think that I don't need anybody to tell me I've done well mm -hmm. because my wife, was the right choice. Mm -hmm. I am the financial donor. I donate the sperm and she take it from there and help me to make them what they are today. And I have 18 grand and great grandchildren. It's only 18 of us? 18. And I have gone through the... How many is guys? <laughs> I've gone through the... Mm -hmm. survey mm -hmm. and at the last survey there were 11 who want to be doctors okay. I'm not one of those 11 right? no you are a businessman oh okay okay so um, I think that one thing I never told you one secret I had. my mother told me that when I was seven years old the public health inspector mm -hmm. who used to come around to inspect home, gardens, toilet facilities, kitchen where you live to make sure you understand standard. A very lovely lady came one day mm -hmm. and I said, Mommy, you know when I grow up I went married to a nurse. And I married a nurse. Married a nurse. Yes. I've never told you. I haven't said, Mommy, you know, one day I got to marry her. No, not yet. Don't not me. yet. Not yet. Don't follow my Not yet. <laughs> Wait, don't, don't tell them I'm going to marry them on the first anyway, day I met them. I want to say congratulations to you. Let me shake your hand. Because the lady met me and said, mm -hmm. Do you know Chad? I said, yes. Chad? Yes. Yes. He has this thing that we watch. There it is. Yes. Say hi to them. They might be watching. And she said, oh, I know him because the son is related to you. Yes. And I said guys. to her, that's why he is as good as he is. <laughs> yes, guys. Guys, I don't think you understand. My whole life, I'm, are you related to Bernard Charles? Finally, the accomplishment has come. Are you related to Chan? Ah, the guys, this is a big moment and this is a shared moment between us because we made that. 
But she's asked me uh-huh. if I'm related to you. I said, he's related to, to me. To me. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Grandpa, we got all your questions. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for watching. We will be, I'll be, I'm going to get all the information for the giveaway for the four books for the Tain. Are you going to match my donation? I'm going to match your donation. For four of the politics of power. Three girls and one Three boy. Three girls and one boy. And they have to be doing political science, social science, something um, in that I area. I should not. They have to be. Or aspiring to be. Doing that, uh, well, you know, everybody wants a book. Uh-huh. Yep. But I think that it, this one will be more for a, a girl or a boy, a man or a woman who is uh, at university. Mm. And doing the social science. So this one will be degree this degree specific and this one will be for anybody who wins again. Yes, so. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this a long video. I got majority of the questions answered. Thank you for being here. They're gonna want you back for another time because they've already told me from the tennis vlog that it's time to bring you back a couple more times. They're gonna wanna see you well, at least once a month. Tell you something. Um, I would make a suggestion to you uh-huh. that if you can refine this interview, uh-huh. it's probably one of the better interviews oh, for sure. I have had. For sure. We haven't gone into things abroad. Oh, we haven't. Guys, you're going to get a part two. My first interview was on NBC, oh. 1961. And I was helping the government of Jamaica to fight for independence. Ooh. And, uh, there. We didn't even get into those questions. That's our next time. Next time. That's our next time. Goodbye. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Peace out.